the sugar disease, diabetes, affects hundreds of millions of people all over the world. Patrick Rorsman is a scientist who wants to better understand what goes wrong in our bodies when we eat and drink sweet things. The pancreas is the organ that produces digestive juices in our bodies. It also contains endocrine cells, which produce hormones to regulate blood sugar levels. In people with diabetes, these cells malfunction and interfere with the proper control of the sugar levels. This is harmful and in the worst case scenario can be fatal. The goal of Patrick's research is to put an end to one of the greatest public health problems of our time. The goal of my research is to find out precisely how glucose regulates the release of the pancreatic hormones in the normal state and, and how it becomes perturbed in diabetes and if we can correct these defects by some sort of therapeutic interventions. Here at Oxford University in the United Kingdom, Patrick Rorsman has worked as a professor for the last 12 years. Last year, he became a fellow of the Royal Society, Britain's National Academy of the Natural Sciences. Patrick originally trained to be a doctor in Sweden, but he got hooked on science as a student and has been a researcher full-time since the 1980s. In his doctoral thesis, he was able to identify the electrical activity of cells in the pancreas using a new technique. This achievement gained him recognition in the scientific community. I still remember, I can see the signals in, in, in front of me and how, how the beta cells suddenly became active when we increased the, the glucose concentration around them. That was a momentous moment in, 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 my, in my life and it certainly uh, decided my, my career track and thus my life. Then, after 20 years of diabetes research in Gothenburg and Lund, Sweden, Patrick Rorsman was recruited by one of the world's top universities in the United Kingdom. It was a period of great turmoil uh, to come here, I mean, to uproot the family and our dog and, and, and to come from Sweden to, to, to Oxford. And I mean, just find, finding a house, finding schools which were okay, that was, I mean, that was a, essentially a, a full-time job to begin with. But uh, now, eventually, the, du the dust settled, and, um, and now we are fine. Hey! Hey! Now come here. Hey, for that Ole. Oh, what a good. What can I take for Oh, that's right. I'm there. That's all the time. Moving to the UK was a big step for his family. Not least of all because of language. You say that we did it. We have the problem that we speak Swedish. Yeah, that's right. After 12 years, we felt that we were still good. I don't think that we have gotten better. Tvärtom. Had we known that you were Swedish, we would have done it. Well, I'm glad that we didn't know it. So we did 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 it. During his 12 years in the UK, Patrick Rorsman has established a world-leading diabetes lab at the Churchill Hospital in Oxford. Good morning, everybody. Well, I'm sorry I'm late. <laughs> uh, never happened before. Well, maybe we should get started. Dave, do you have anything to moan about this week? <laughs> <laughs> Mainly have uh, these few things out, which is the... Here, he manages about 15 researchers who perform experiments in the lab daily. <laughs> to understand what happens in the body when we eat sugar, the hormone-producing cells must first be removed from the body in order to isolate them. These hormone-producing cells are grouped into small aggregates called the islets of Langerhans. The isolated cells are then stimulated using a concentrated sugar solution to mimic what happens after a meal, and the cell activity is recorded through a microscope. This looks very good. And here they are. Look that's, here. Here they come. Here they come. <laughs> this is true. Huh? This is fantastic. The best thing in research is your driven a passion of, 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 and curiosity, and you try to uh, find something out. I mean, uh, that's how things work. And this is here, is, could, could be a blood vessel or something? Or a dead cell. Or, or a dead cell. Uh, uh. And then yes, the feeling that when you, sometimes when you walk 
home in the evening, you know that you have seen something that no one else has ever seen before. I can't think of, I mean, that is, I mean, that's, that is a fantastically joyous experience. And here, these dots you see here, these are individual insulin granules fusing with the cell. So this is actually insulin coming out into the, into the body. These cells in the pancreas are equipped with tiny pores that generate electrical signals which ensure that the hormones insulin and glucagon get released into the body. The sugar in the bloodstream is called glucose. Insulin lowers the glucose level in the blood, whereas glucagon increases the level. Together, they regulate the blood sugar to maintain even levels in the body. By studying these pores and hormones in detail, Patrick and his team have come up with the groundwork for new drugs and treatments for the disease. To understand this disease even better, Patrick Roarsman is in the process of expanding his research even further. For the past two years, he has been commuting to Gothenburg. And here at the Solgrenska Academy at Gothenburg University, he is now building another diabetes lab. The goal of the research in Gothenburg is to have a more holistic approach on diabetes. Rather than studying the indiv individual cells separately, we shall try to study how they speak to each other and how defects in the signaling between them leads to and exacerbates diabetes. Before we come in. Yes. Uh, may we come in? No? Yes. Diabetes is associated with a high risk of side effects, complications which can be harmful to vital organs such as the heart and liver, and which in turn can lead to premature death. The first experiment was beautiful. The hope is that the research being conducted today in Gothenburg will lead to treatments that stop these complications from developing. We make progress, and I'm sure that one day we will nail it but it will take a little bit longer, but hopefully it will be accomplished during uh, my active career as a scientist, so within the next 10 to 15 years. The number of people with diabetes has grown more than tenfold since Patrick Roisman began studying the disease in the 80s. This is probably a consequence of the fact that the most common form of diabetes, adult onset or type 2 diabetes, occurs when we eat too much and exercise too little. But exactly what is going wrong in the body is still a mystery. Although we start to see the picture maybe with regard to the pancreatic islets, it remains to combine this part of the jigsaw puzzle with other areas of the puzzle and to, to combine these into the, the full picture, I think that is one of the major challenges in, in, in the next 10 or 20 years. After 35 years of research, Patrick Rorsman is about to come to the overall picture needed in order to solve the diabetes puzzle and be able to correct what once went wrong. Put simply, by understanding diabetes and its causes and being able to cure it, we will actually save lives. <laughs>